Hey there, it's Adacho Formaster and today I'm back with another SketchUp rendering tutorial using RRender Next. In this video I'll show you how to create all kinds of reflections in SketchUp. The model you see at the moment is a model I made to explain this tutorial and the idea of reflection actually. And as you can see it's a kitchen which I thought would be the perfect scenario of this uh, or for this tutorial. So let's start. Um, first, I would like to actually add a mirror to our kitchen because I mean, who doesn't want to see himself while cooking? So um, to add a mirror, you have to click on this icon here in the iRender NXT interface. It's the same icon we also used in the adding lights tutorial, which I made, I think the previous video or the one before that. So uh, then you have to select mirror here at the top. And from here you can make a mirror that actually looks exactly like you would like it to look like. So you can change the mirror size and the frame size and the frame colors. So um, they're actually all kinds of thing and you can actually in that way optimize your uh, mirror. So if you've made the mirror you would like to add to your model, then you can select whether you want to add one mirror or multiple mirrors here at the bottom. And then uh, you can just um, put the one that you um, want to create, you select OK, and then you actually place it on the place on the wall where you would like uh, the mirror to be. So as you can see the mirror does what it's actually supposed to do because here you see a render of uh, the kitchen with the mirror added in it. And uh, yeah, the mirror just reflects and I ran the NXT actually did this by itself and actually made uh, that or came up with the idea that a mirror reflects. So in this um, yeah, render, the mirror should actually reflect what image is actually being displayed on the mirror. Now I'm going to make this countertop reflective. To do this, I just hover over the countertop and then right click and then I click edit material. Now we can actually edit the countertop. First you have to click over here on default. Here you see many default settings. So since we want to make the countertop reflective, we'll just go for, go for reflective. So let's see what the result is when you actually uh, go for reflection or reflective as a default setting in this um, yeah, setting for the countertop. So as you can see, it looks pretty cool already. You have some slight reflections of the countertop and it really looks uh, quite much more um, yeah, realistic actually. So now I would like to add a certain type of reflection to this coffee maker over here. So first right click on the um, material of the coffee maker and then select edit material. As I said, there are many default settings and these values on the right actually uh, change when you select another default setting. So um, these values actually change to better fit the characteristics of these types of materials. For example, plastic actually uh, reflects uh, not as good as metal. So if you actually select metal, you will see these values change compared to uh, selecting uh, plastic actually. The intensity controls how strong things are reflected on the object, uh, which you see in these values over here. And the sharpness actually controls how sharp the details in the reflection will be. So for example, here you see the sharpness at quite a high level. So now let's turn it down. And as you can see, there's uh, much less detail being shown in the coffee maker. So here I actually have a comparison between uh, three images. One uh, image rendered at uh, plastic and then an intensity of 0.15. And as you can see, it, the, only the highlights are being highlighted. And furthermore, there's not much more reflection because it's plastic, which isn't very reflective. But here you see metal and that actually has an intensity of 0.9 and a sharpness of one. And it's almost like a mirror-like reflection. And then the last one is metal, but with an intensity of 0.9 like the previous one, but a sharpness of 0.2. And uh, the sharpness uh, turned down makes the image um, look much more unclear actually. And um, yeah, that makes that it really looks different from uh, the other metal uh, look of the coffee maker. So now I'm going to talk about metallic and glossy. So these two words might sound like they are the same, but they actually aren't. And for this, I've actually added these colored uh, objects so I can actually explain it in a better way. So metallic controls what kind of colors are reflected in the object. So here you see the RGB colors, which are red, green, and blue. And as you can see, this yellow coffee maker has no blue in it. So therefore, if we render it, the blue will reflect as black. Because simply there's actually no blue in the yellow coffee maker because we actually turned it off and therefore the blue can't be reflected and is actually being reflected as black. 
That is because metallic is actually on and metallic controls what colors are reflected based on the color of the object. If we now want to make a blue coffee maker, we have to turn blue all the way up and turn red all the way down. If we now render this, you'll see that the red is displayed as black because there's no red in this blue coffee maker. This might sound kind of confusing, but it's pretty logical and if you just play around with it, I think that you'll actually uh, find out how it works. If we now render the same two scenes again, but with metallic turned off, you'll see that it reflects both colors just fine. As a last topic in this tutorial, I'd like to talk about the glossy option. So what glossy does is it turns the uh, mirror-like reflection off and it only keeps the highlights. So as a comparison, here you see the metal default setting, um, which just uh, reflects uh, the image like kind of a yeah a mirror-like reflection actually. And then you have the metal uh, metal metallic glossy. Uh, yeah, option and the reflections are gone, but you still see the highlights. And with this last one, the metallic, uh, the metal non-metallic glossy, the color of the highlight has actually changed. So there you actually see the impact of glossy in um, comparison with a uh, metallic. So um, that was the tutorial on reflections in iRender NXT. So some things might still be kind of confusing. Um, but I'm sure that if you just start trying out and play around with it, it's pretty logical actually. And uh, Render NXT actually really does quite some things for you already. So it's not really that much work. And it does really make your uh, renders look much more um, realistic actually. So uh, I personally really like that. I'm definitely going to use this more in my own renders. So yeah, I hope you found this tutorial useful. And I hope to see you back in another tutorial.